Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today is one of the single most exciting days in a very, very long time for me, because Memory Museum has officially released their very first dinosaur. You can see straight away, judging also by the thumbnail and the title of the video, but looking right in front of you, in big letters, you can see Dilophosaurus Limited Edition Statue, and this is also the first time that we have had a new sculptor in the line of Memory Museum. The other statues released previously were all sculpted by Sean Cooper. This one is sculpted by Keith Strasser. So, a new sculptor for the line as far as the dinosaurs go. And if we pan back, you can get a wonderful look at this Dilophosaurus straight away. And I do want to say, before going any further, that the box art on this is just absolutely beautiful. Without question, a great way to display this in your home if you have the room would be to just put this on top of the box because the box is magnificent. A wonderful, very forested, prehistoric looking area back there behind the Dilophosaurus, but you can see the Dilophosaurus itself looks beyond fantastic. I am so insanely excited about this figure. And down here in the corner we also have an image of a mammal, and I do believe this mammal will be releasing from Memory Museum very, very soon. And you can also see a different color of a Dilophosaurus back there. There's like a bluish version that has an orange stripe. Now I know Memory Museum initially started out their line by releasing two different variants of each of their statues. And they did that with the Smilodon and Rhinoceros, but then phased it out when we got to the Hippopotamus. So I'm not sure if they have chosen not to release alternate versions anymore, but I have a hunch that maybe the alternate version of the Dilophosaurus initially was meant to be that bluish version, which would have been really, really cool. Although I will say that I do think I would prefer this color scheme that we have received as opposed to the bluish one because this looks just absolutely awesome. So again, the box art looks great. You can see down there in the left hand corner, there is 1 15th scale. And then over here in the right hand corner, it is Memory Museum. As far as the rest of the box, if we actually come up above the box, now of course it's upside down, but you can see there is a really nice, very faint image of the Dilophosaurus right there. And then it says Memory Museum Planet Earth Sculpture Collection right there underneath. I do apologize that that is upside down. But if we turn the box over once again, we've got another incredible image of the Dilophosaurus that is contained inside a little bit of information down here on the Dilophosaurus itself. And then up here, another very cool chart showing some of the other animals in the line as far as prehistoric animals go. We've got the name of the mammal that is coming out, but if you can see right above that mammal, oh yes, there is a Carnotaurus coming from Memory Museum. And man, I am telling you, I am beyond excited for that. Cannot wait to see a Carnotaurus come out from this line in 1 15th scale. Again, all of the statues measure up to each other exactly how they would in real life. They all stay in that same 1 15th scale, which is just awesome. I really, really love that fact about the Memory Museum statues. But I think I've teased it long enough with this box and just showing you guys how incredibly beautiful the box is, but we are here to take a look at the actual Dilophosaurus itself, so let's break it out of its cage right now. So the camera is going to have to, I guess, be back a little bit further than normal because being a 1 15th scale Dilophosaurus, you know it's going to have some pretty good size to it. And here is our Dilophosaurus and it's already on its base and wow at first glance this thing is so incredibly striking and beautifully done that I am without question completely in love with this already I haven't even taken a closer look but at first glance my first impressions I am sold instantly the pose on this is just fantastic I think the pose looks great really nice positioning of the animal as it looks like it's just trotting along or maybe even jogging along after some sort of prey I'm not entirely sure but it looks fantastic and how about that paint scheme I normally would expect like darker colorations to look so good on dinosaurs I mean they don't always have to be dark they can have a little bit of flashiness but there's no real dark coloration to this one at all really nice light lime type of a green for the majority of the body with some variations of green throughout and then really nice orange striping and honestly it looks extremely natural on this dinosaur kudos to memory museum for pulling this paint scheme off in an absolutely brilliant fashion so i am beyond beyond excited about this let's go ahead get this up close and take a closer look at it right now so starting up here at the head sculpt straight away you can see how much incredibly nice scale work is put into the head sculpt really really beautiful 
detailing and skin texture all throughout the head sculpt of the animal. Really nicely sculpted out nostrils which are defined with a nice darker coloration within them. You can see some very nice, very fine scaling and skin texture within the palette of the Dilophosaurus as well. Beautiful detailing up there on the crest. You can see as I turn it, you can really get a sense of how much incredible sculpt and detail is within that crest. It really looks fantastic and the paint application all over the figure is so incredibly well done with many different tones of coloration included. You can see that it is primarily a red coloration up here on the crest, but you can also see that there is quite a bit of alternate variations of those colors included, giving it a super lifelike appearance. You can start to take note of some alternate variations of color there, kind of within that area that would be the skin flap of the mouth. And actually, if we take a look at the mouth, look at how incredibly realistic the mouth looks. Ridiculously nice, those teeth 100% look like real dinosaur teeth. They look like a real animal's teeth. So the teeth look fantastic as far as the sculpt and the paint. You can also see that hook in the jaw that you would expect to find on a Dilophosaurus. But if you can actually get inside the mouth, it's going to be a little hard to actually get in there. If I can find that perfect lighting, maybe if we try the other side now, you can see it a little bit there, but look at how incredibly nicely detailed the tongue is. It's really hard to get in there and get a shot of it really nicely. Maybe I'll take a picture with the camera and use the flash, but I really just want to give you guys a good idea of what the detailing looks like, along with a really nice paint application on the tongue inside the mouth, and even the gums you can see right there under the teeth are incredibly realistic. I think the coloration they've used is picture perfect for what I would expect to find on a real living dinosaur. Very, very realistic coloration, and you can see the teeth along with the tongue and everything inside the mouth has an incredibly realistic gloss. I think it's glossed to perfection as well, giving it an incredibly, incredibly realistic and very lifelike appearance. So the realism of the statue is just off the charts. It is ridiculous how realistic it actually is in person and how much that area, the teeth, the inside of the mouth and everything, really genuinely looks like a real living dinosaur's mouth. Unfortunately, it's just a little too dark in the mouth with the camera. You just can't quite get a good shot of it. But trust me when I tell you in person, it is just ridiculously, ridiculously nice. Up here in the eye area, you can see the eye is painted with a nice yellowish color, and then it has an orange and then a black pupil. It is glossed as well, looks extremely realistic as far as the eye shine goes. You can see the detailing all around the eye looks great. There are quite a few different variations of browns and everything included all around the eye, so there is no sloppiness and no laziness whatsoever when it comes to the paint on this figure. It is very, very lifelike. As we start to lead back into the neck, look at how wonderful the scaling looks as we lead back here. And again, so much nice color variation. You really can start to take note of the beautiful greens, and then you've got kind of like a black spotting, and just in general, really nice color variation, color tones, and skin tones. Then on the underside of the throat, you've got some hanging skin here, and it's like a light brownish type of a color that runs down the throat. You can see lots of creasing and kind of skin folds and stuff in the neck skin right there, the hanging skin of the throat. It looks extremely realistic as well, really nicely sculpted out, and you can see that it starts with like a very light green kind of, right here amongst this darker green. It's a little bit of a darker green, still kind of a light lime green, but a really light green here that stripes down the neck down into the shoulder blade, and then that transitions to these kind of orange spots and stripes that litter the side of the animal, and it looks so cool. And then you've got this very nice spotting all over the upper side, which also helps to add some really beautiful color to the figure. You can see the shoulder blade really nicely protruding from the skin there. As we move down into the arms, the arms look great as far as the scale work goes and the sculpt work, and then you can see kind of like musculature and everything throughout the arm, but it also transitions from this green to like an orangish type of a color, like an orangish brown, and it does the same for the arms and the feet. It's a really nice coloration. I think it's very natural looking as well. Beautifully painted and beautifully sculpted hands. You've got the really nicely painted fingernails on both hands. It's kind of having a hard time focusing on them, but look at how great that looks. You can see the claws are also glossed to make them shine like real nails would. And again, color variation galore. You can even see browns and everything throughout the hands kind of creeping in. It looks extremely, extremely cool. You've got some more very nice skin folding and everything, some beautiful skin wrinkles and skin stretching there in the stomach region. Beautiful scaling all over the dinosaur once again, and all the paint application is applied so naturally. It all genuinely looks like the actual body color of this animal, and not just paint on a model in any way, shape, or form. 
really nicely sculpted out hip bone up here. You've got some very nice muscle tone here in the thigh as we lead down into the calf. Again, nice muscle tone there. You've got a very nicely sculpted out kneecap there in the front. And then it once again transitions from that beautiful green coloration to that orangish brown down here on the feet. And the feet look great really bird-like, beautiful scoot-like appearance that runs down the toes, and it genuinely looks like a real living animal's feet. Nicely painted nails once again, no sloppiness, beautifully painted out dew claw back there as well. And there seems to be like a wash, like a dark wash included in the feet to help give it some color variation down there as well. And actually like this light green, which is kind of like the darkest green actually on the body, but there is a darker green underneath. So there's like a really cool dark green that's been washed all over the figure. And you can see it creeping through in certain areas like right here, and it really gives it an incredibly realistic appearance. And again, some beautiful color variation. You can also see some striping that runs along the legs with that dark black and mixture of like that black and brown sort of. And it's kind of like a striping, but it spots itself all over. And it does run down the legs almost all the way down to right to where we start to transition to that orangish brown coloration. Got some nice creasing in the skin back here, some beautiful skin pulling off of the body showing some of the movement within the leg right there. It appears as though possibly that's a cloaca sculpted out there as well. So really realistic as far as adding in all the details. And then we start to lead out into the tail. You've got lots of really nice skin texture as we run out the tail and you can see the beautiful orange kind of striping and spotting all over the place and you've got kind of like an outline of that brown that spots all around the orange. Helps to give it such a cool, very flashy look but again, all of the sculpt is so well done, and all of the paint is very naturally applied, and it comes out to a really nice point. Beautiful curves in the tail as well. Very natural looking curves, nothing out of the realm of possibility for sure. Looking at the opposing side, once again, you can see complete accuracy when it comes to the eye paint and how incredibly well placed it is. It looks beautiful. Very, very nice coloration that they've chosen for the eye. I think it all looks exactly as it should. Beautiful paintwork once again up here on the crest of the Dilophosaurus, and again wonderful sculpt work all over the head and crest area. Really nicely applied dark paint right there to the nostril, again really elaborating that area. And you can see how wonderful the mouth looks, again super super realistic for sure. As we lead back into the neck, you can start to see again some color variation with alternate browns, darker and lighter browns right there. And you can start to see the skin stretching really nicely because the Dilophosaurus has its head turned to the left. So it's really, really nicely showing that skin stretching here off of the body. So the actual movement of the dinosaur is shown absolutely brilliantly throughout the sculpt. They did a very, very good job as far as paying attention to the way the skin would be reacting for the positioning of the body. Really nice work done as far as the very small details go when it comes to this dinosaur, this Dilophosaurus. Lots of skin wrinkling, skin folding and everything all in the neck region once again. The coloration is just fantastic everywhere on this statue. We get back here, you can see the really nicely sculpted out shoulder blade there. And then we come down here into the arms, really nicely sculpted out detailing. Again, very, very fine scaling all over the animal. There is the hand and the beautiful dark wash that's applied to the hand, bringing out all that detail wonderfully. And you can see how nicely done like that scoot-like appearance down the fingernails looks. Really, really nice paint application all over this. I can't say that enough. The more and more I look at it, the more impressed I'm getting at just how incredible looking this is. Very lizard-like, but at the same time, very bird-like. It's extremely cool. Again, you can see many different variations of green, kind of that dark green wash that's been applied to the wonderful scaling all over the place, and then that little bit of a lighter green the wonderful oranges all over the body right there. You've got lots of skin stretching and skin folding and everything going on down here in the stomach region. As we lead back up here, you can see the very beautifully sculpted out hip and the really nicely done muscle tone right here in the calf and thigh area. Very nicely sculpted out kneecap. And then we move down into the foot. Once again, this foot looks beautiful, extremely bird-like absolutely awesome on both sides and then we come back up here and you can see that the tail sculpt looks great as we lead out the length of that extremely long and beautifully curved tail of the Dilophosaurus so this figure is just off the charts this statue is ridiculously ridiculously beautiful every spot that I look I am beyond impressed and this is an incredibly awesome start to the dinosaur collection from Memory Museum. We have had a prehistoric animal previously from them with the Smilodon, but this is the first dinosaur to enter the line 
and I don't think they could have possibly done a better job on this at all. And then taking a look at the base, the base isn't really much more than kind of like a mound of earth. It's like a very earthy type of a texture. It looks really cool, very natural, exactly the type of thing I would expect to find a Dilophosaurus kind of putting its footprints into. And you can also see a hole right there because there's a peg on the Dilophosaurus foot that slides into that hole right there, which is different from any of the other memory museum statues previously as they were all magnetic. This one actually includes a peg, but that is because the foot of the Dilophosaurus is kind of picking up off the ground as it seems to be trotting along. So to be able to include a magnet, I really don't think that would have worked out at all. It's just too small of a foot and too thin of a foot. You wouldn't have been able to pull off that magnetic gimmick with this Dilophosaurus at all, I think. So a peg was pretty much necessary for that. But you can see such incredibly done sculpt work all over the base as far as the earthy texture. It looks really really incredible and the paintwork is just as beautiful as you found on the dinosaur itself really nicely done lots of many different variations of tones of brown and like light browns and stuff giving it an incredibly realistic appearance and it also is on top of this wonderful marble base very heavy very sturdy giving an extremely impressive appearance and 100 percent looks like a museum piece exactly the type of thing that you would expect to find in a museum but you can own this yourself which is one of the coolest aspects of these memory museum statues and then on the underneath you've got memory museum planet earth sculpture keith strasser who is the sculptor of this dilophosaurus then jurassic dilophosaurus statue limited edition 1 15th scale so really nice very professional you've also got these little rubber pieces on the underside to make sure that it stays put and does not damage your table or anything that you display it on so an awesome awesome base and it looks beautiful just like the dinosaur itself then to apply the dilophosaurus to the base of course you've got a peg here you're going to take your peg you're going to find the hole and then you're going to nice and gently slide it in Match the toes up with the footprint there, and your Dilophosaurus is in its base. As far as a size goes, on the Dilophosaurus, he's pretty long, so we're not going to be able to get the head and tail in at the same time. So for a length from the snout to the tail, you are looking at about 20 inches on the dot, or about 51 centimeters for a length. So a very, very long Dilophosaurus. And for a height, of course, it's on the base, so we're going to measure from the ground up to the top of the crest, about eight and three quarter inches, just under nine inches, or 22 and a half centimeters. For a size on the base, for a length, about eight inches or 20 centimeters. And then for a width, you're not going to be able to see it, but it's about five and a half inches or 13 centimeters, somewhere in that range for a width on the base for a size comparison, here are the Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Jurassic World toy line from Mattel. And with these figures here, if you happen to have any of these, you'll have a very, very good idea that this Dilophosaurus is really, really big, very nicely sized, a very large statue, easily the biggest in the Memory Museum line so far. This Dilophosaurus definitely takes the cake for that, and honestly, it is without question my favorite in the line so far. And if you happen to have any of these figures, you'll have a really good idea that this is a very sizable piece. So this Memory Museum 1 15th scale Dilophosaurus is fantastic. Unbelievably fantastic. I think that the sculpt of this is amazing looking. And this is easily my favorite of the Memory Museum line. But not only that, this is also my current favorite Dilophosaurus in my collection for sure. The entire appearance of this is just so strikingly beautiful that it is honestly mind-boggling how good this is in person. The sculpt is fantastic. It's walking along, kind of looks like it may either be running or starting to run or just kind of jogging along a little bit, but the feet look great. The way they're positioned as the dinosaur is running along looks fantastic. Even with the rear foot kind of having the foot for the most part up off the ground, you can see that the feet are leaving the ground in a very bird-like fashion. The way we would see like an emu or something or an ostrich walking is exactly the way I can see the toes bending and folding here as this dinosaur is walking along and it looks so extremely realistic and with the peg holding it in it allows it to hold this position perfectly and it overall gives the entire thing such a very very cool appearance for sure the sculpt overall when we move away from the feet also looks incredible i think everything on this dilophosaurus is just ridiculously ridiculously nice such beautiful elegance to the sculpt overall 
really beautiful curves in the tail and a really nice, very majestic appearance to the neck and head area. Beautiful, beautiful work as far as the sculpt work goes. The minute details also are great. Really beautiful scaling all over the body. The wonderful skin folding and skin stretching and everything. Depending on where the body is moving, it brilliantly shows the movement of the dinosaur all throughout the sculpt in every possible way. I really love the stretching of the skin in the neck region, really showing just how the neck would be moving and how the skin would be reacting. It looks great. The realism of the figure is also off the charts, especially when you get up into the mouth and you actually take a look at the mouth. It is amazing looking in person. Again, the detailing of the teeth and the tongue and then the coloration, the way they've been painted and the incredible gloss that is used makes it honestly look like a real living animal's mouth. And it really takes the overall realism of this statue to another level. I think the mouth is done to perfection and 100% looks like a real legit living animal's mouth. The paint job on the statue overall is just breathtaking. I think that the paint they've used is really, really cool and looks so amazing on this Dilophosaurus. The tones of green used all over this are incredibly cool. Really nice, very light greens that I wouldn't expect to work so well, but honestly, everything on this looks like it is the color of a Dilophosaurus. It looks like this is how a Dilophosaurus was meant to look. Such a very beautiful, very striking look with those orange stripes and the really nice greens, different variations of greens, and I love the way it transitions to like that orangish brown on the arms and feet. It really does look fantastic, and then you have that beautiful light coloration, like a light brown in the throat, and then a light like white in the underbelly and underside of the tail. Then you also have the wonderful coloration up there on the crest with the beautiful reds and everything. Beautifully painted eyes, wonderful shades of brown and black spots all over the animal. Everything as far as the paintwork is incredible, and there's just so much paintwork included in this. The base is also fantastic, really realistic looking, beautifully painted, beautifully sculpted. Just like you see on the dinosaur, it is a wonderful addition to this set overall and really completes the entire scene and image of this set. Fantastic, fantastic work from Memory Museum as far as both the dinosaur and base. And then you of course have the very cool marble underside to the base and the very professional and museum-like appearance that really takes the entire set to another level. So if you want to pick this up, it is currently available on the Memory Museum eBay store. So I will include a link in the description that will take you straight to this Memory Museum Dilophosaurus' page on their eBay store. I do believe you can also pick this up on Dan's Dinosaurs if you would rather go that route. And I completely recommend anybody interested in picking it up to do so right away because like the box states, and it's one thing I haven't really been pushing on you guys too much or stressing to you guys, this is a limited edition. And although it doesn't state how limited it is on the actual base or on the box or anything, after speaking with Memory Museum, I have found out that this Dilophosaurus specifically is limited to under 100 pieces. So that is very, very little in the overall grand scheme of things when you think about how many people out there might want this Dilophosaurus. So if you want to pick this up, make sure you get an order in quickly before it sells out and you'll miss your opportunity to own one of the best Dilophosaurus statues I've ever seen in my entire life. And that goes for the same with the other Memory Museum statues that I've reviewed for you guys. They're all limited editions. I don't know entirely for sure how many of each there are, but again, all being limited and potentially around that same size range means that they're very limited and won't be around for too long if you don't get an order in quickly. So make sure you buy this amazing Memory Museum Dilophosaurus. Absolutely fantastic work on their part. And also make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.